Can we trust the laws of logic? Is logic safe from criticism, or is it just another man-made construct built on sand? Many argue the laws of logic are not true and use a form of Russell's paradox to show this. Here is a simple argument of how they try to show the laws of logic are not true or objective. Premise 1. Assume that the laws of logic are true. Premise 2. All propositions are either true or false. Premise 3. The proposition, this proposition is false, is neither true nor false. This is of course a problem, because if the statement is true, then it is not false as it claims. If it is false, then the proposition is not true in saying it is false. Do you see the issue? Premise 4. There exists at least one proposition that is neither true nor false. Premise 5. It is not the case that all propositions are either true or false. Premise 6. It both is and is not the case that all propositions are either true or false. Therefore, the laws of logic are not true. So if this argument works, it would show we cannot trust the laws of logic. However, there are several problems with this argument and line of reasoning that needs to be addressed. First, the argument breaks down in premise two. Not all propositions are true or false. A proposition can be defined as a statement or assertion that expresses a judgment or opinion. Consider the statement, Easter is the best holiday. This cannot be proven true or false. It is just an expression of opinion. So you can have propositions that are neither true or false. Nothing in logic or language denies this. So the rest of the argument breaks down if premise two doesn't even work. So building on that, let's consider also this statement. Carloman was murdered by his brother, Charlemagne, so he could have the throne for himself. This statement is either true or false. However, we cannot be sure if it is true due to lack of information. We do not have enough records or evidence to confirm whether or not Carloman was murdered or died naturally. It is simply beyond the scope of our knowledge today. Which brings us to the next problem with this argument. This argument itself is based on Gödel's theorems, which many think shows logic doesn't work. But in a nutshell, they actually only show that no consistent system of axioms whose theorems can be listed by an effective procedure is capable of proving all truth. In other words, Gödel's theorems show we cannot fully prove something is true just because it seems like it is or is consistent. All Gödel did we show we are limited in having a total proof of something. But even without Girdle, that is intuitively obvious. Many things will always just be 99% probably true, but absolute certainty will always be beyond our reach. So because of that, we can also deny premise three and say it is a false dichotomy. I can explain how and why if we reduce the problem to mathematics, which can show the statement, this proposition is false, can actually be solved. Allow me to explain using the work of G. Spencer Brown. The proposition can be represented as x equals negative one over x. Now like the statement in our argument, if you try to solve with x equals one, the equation will yield negative one. If you try x equals negative one, then positive one comes back. The solution oscillates between one and negative one, like true or false, one being true and negative one being false, just like with our proposition. If you say it is true, then it can't be because it claims it's false. If you say it is false, then it cannot be true in claiming it is false. Same problem, just represented mathematically. So how do we escape this vicious cycle? The solution is to use i, which is also the same as the square root of negative one. Remember from your high school math class that i squared is negative one. If you substitute x for i, you get i equals negative one over i and negative one over i is also i. Thus mathematically, the problem can be solved because i transcends the paradox. The only problem is we cannot epistemically understand the mathematical usage of i. Thus Gödel is proven right and not the absolute skeptic who doubts logic is true. There is no contradiction in logic. We just cannot know or prove all truth or fully understand everything. Just like with our proposition, we cannot know the answer due to our epistemic limits. But the fact that we're limited and unable to totally prove logic doesn't mean the laws of logic are not true. The other thing to remember is you just can't deny the laws of logic. Any attack on the laws of logic is self-refuting 
As the philosopher Thomas Nagel says, we cannot criticize some of our own claims of reason without employing reason at some other point to formulate and support those criticisms. In other words, to attack the laws of logic, you have to assume your attack on logic is logically formulated. If you actually didn't think the laws of logic were true, you would not be relying on logical reasoning to show the laws of logic are not true. It completely undermines your very argument, because showing your conclusion the laws of logic are not true means your logical reasoning used to acquire that conclusion didn't work. This is, of course, because it is also impossible to think or imagine something where logic doesn't apply. You can't simply escape logic or step outside of it like a set of boundaries. It is not something changeable. Logic simply is a description of everything that is and everything that is possible. If something is outside of logic, then it is nothing. No thing can be outside of logic, so to speak. Any thought you have will be logical and definable in some sense. As Nagel says, in skepticism about logic, we can never reach a point at which we have two possibilities with which all the evidence is compatible and between which it is therefore impossible to choose. The forms of thought that must be used in any attempt to set up such an alternative force themselves to the top of the heap. I cannot think, for example, that it would be an epistemically identical situation if 2 plus 2 equaled 5, but my brains were being scrambled, because I cannot conceive of 2 plus 2 being equal to 5. The epistemological skeptic relies on reason to get us to a neutral point above the level of thoughts that are the object of skepticism. The logical skeptic can offer no such external platform. If you're dealing with an epistemic skeptic, a good position to remember is particularism. Particularism is a formal response to a skeptic who doubts logic and knowledge. It states that we do not doubt or are skeptical of something unless we are given good reason to think so. For example, we do not doubt all the mathematical knowledge, which shows us 2 plus 2 equals 4, unless the skeptic can give us reason to think so. We do not doubt we are conscious and our cognitive faculties work, unless the skeptic can give us reason to think so. The skeptic, of course, disagrees and thinks we need to prove knowledge claims are 100% true or else we should doubt them. The particularist turns this on the skeptic and reminds him or her we do not doubt knowledge or intuition unless the skeptic can give us good reason to think we should. For example, perhaps we doubt our intuitive perspective, the sun is smaller than the earth because we have good evidence in astronomy and physics to think so. However, we do not doubt things like the laws of logic because we don't have good reasons, like with the size of the sun, to doubt them, and the skeptic has not provided any, other than the mere possibility they might be false and that we cannot be 100% sure. But those are not good enough reasons to throw out knowledge and intuition. So because not all propositions need to be true, we have already accepted we cannot be 100% certain in the truth of all things, attacks on the laws of logic are self-defeating, and through particularism we have no reason to doubt our knowledge, we can see the attack on logic is an utter failure. The epistemic skeptic does nothing more than a clever trick in fear-mongering from a mere possibility. The laws of logic are objectively true, and there is no reason to doubt them.